All right, hello everybody. It's Jordan here with Cloud Underground again on another Thursday. I hope everybody has had a good week thus far. I am here today to show you how to set up a network-wide DNS server on your home network with the Underground Nexus, uh, as always. So look forward to that. But before we do, I want to talk about the newest product, which we've just released. Uh, here's our website for those of you who aren't familiar with us. I would really encourage you to go check out our web website, which is cloudunderground.dev, D-E-V. And you can learn about all of the different products and trainings that we have. But I think a lot of the times I get on here and I talk about how we're a cloud company and all this stuff. And people probably get confused about what I'm even talking about or, or what we do. And we just released this thing called the RPG of Life Incubator, which should help clear any of those sort of questions up for you. If you're curious about our business or what we do, then I would encourage you to go just join the RPG of Life Incubator. It's free to sign up and it will basically tell you what the next steps need to be in your journey um, for us to help you or, you know, if it, it will also really show you whether or not uh, what we do is a good fit for you. So go please check out the RPG of Life Incubator today. Again, it's free to sign up and uh, it's a cool new thing that we have, are offering. So that's all I'm going to talk about with the company and announcements today. So we will hop right in, I guess, to setting up our DNS server. So what I have here is a putty instance and it is going to a Raspberry Pi that I have set up on the network. I was going to use the NVIDIA Jetson AGX, but the AGX doesn't seem to have port 53 open. So we're going to use a Raspberry Pi instead because they do have port 53 available. So the first thing that we need to do is set up an underground Nexus instance. So I'm going to basically start from the very beginning. And that's partly because we need to get port 53 open here at the with the first Docker container, essentially. So here's our GitHub page. It's github.com slash underground ops slash underground dash nexus. So this is the essentially instructions page that we have, which tells you how to get started with underground nexus. And it's got all the commands that we need in order to get these Docker containers running we are going to go ahead and use the docker secure poll for raspberry pi nvidia jets and arm systems so let's go ahead and copy this command and then let's hop in here to our putty again and we've got to add sudo to the beginning now to be clear this raspberry pi already has docker on it so if you don't have docker yet that's your first step to get the underground nexus working but once you have docker you can just go ahead and paste in this command and then the other thing that we're going to do here is open up ports 53 and I believe for the DNS stuff we need to do it this way so we're going to have 53 go into 53 slash TCP and then we're going to have dash P 53 if I can type correctly 53 slash UDP and let's just check because our development poll has these ports open by default, but our secure poll does not. So right there, 53 to 53 TCP, 53 to 53 UDP. So we should be good there. And I think the other thing I'm gonna do, as you've seen me do in a couple of the earlier streams, is we're gonna open a few ports in 6,000 range just for future experimentation. If I decide to do anything, it's not necessarily important for you but I'm gonna do it here anyway. So, and I'm gonna open up 100 ports in the 6,000 range. So that's 60, 6,000 to 6,100 going to 6,000 to 6,100. And with that, our Docker command should be ready to go. If we press enter, it should start to run. It doesn't take too long to get this initial container up and running usually for me it's a, a minute or two at most so you know we'll sit here and, and see how long it takes but it's basically gonna 
download a bu bunch of packages that it needs to get the container running and then it will start the container. The real, the really long part of this setup process is the next little bit, which you'll see in a moment. And I'm actually going to pause the video after I run the setup script. So the setup script is what takes forever. But depending on your internet connection, all of these steps may take a while. Like if you had a really slow internet connection, this step could take, I don't know, I mean 10 to 20 minutes. And if that's the case, then your setup script probably is going to take many, many hours to complete. So just be aware of that. These are kind of large downloads. Okay, so we've got our container running here. That's our, our container right there, our container ID. It's also called underground nexus, so we can usually send Docker commands to it with underground dash nexus um, in, in the, as the container name. So just so you know. Now the next step, so we, we did this now. This is essentially step one if you already have Docker. And then step two is pasting in our setup script. And many of you may have seen this many times, so I apologize if you have. But anyway, we have to add sudo to the front of it because this is on a Raspberry Pi with Debian, so we need sudo to increase the privileges. And then there's the script that we're gonna run. So it's docker exec underground dash nexus. See, that's what I was talking about. We, we're just, um, the one of the nice things is because the container is always named the same, we can have the name of the container in the script and it should work for everybody, even though the container ID is always going to be different for everyone. So anyway, sudo docker exec underground dash nexus bash deploy olympia.sh. And the, this docker exec command allows you to run commands inside of a container that is already running rather than running it externally. Like if we didn't have the exec, then Docker wouldn't know what to do with this command. So we're sending that command inside the container. Just so you know what's going on there. Okay, so I'm going to press enter and it's going to start doing stuff and it's going to take it probably 30 to 40 minutes for it to complete this entire install process since this is a completely brand new clean install. So at this point I will stop the video and I will come back once it is running. So it won't take long for you. I should be back immediately. Okay, I'm back and it's a bit darker in here, so I apologize if my camera's a little weird. Anyway, we did finish installing the Underground Nexus instance on our Pi here. So we're pretty much done with the putty at this point. I'm just gonna exit it. And here is our Underground Nexus instance now. I might have to turn a couple of things off, so I'm gonna do that real quick. And actually the first thing that I need to do is restart my portainer. So if I do a sudo docker, oh, hold on. Also, let me do this. Oh, there we go. So I like um, to go to preferences and change my appearance. So I'm gonna make this a more Raspberry Pi sort of theme. Cool, all right, much better. So now we can go to our Mate terminal and let's do a sudo docker container ls. And that'll give us all of the containers. I did not set my password as portainer was installing. So the first thing that we have to do is restart portainer because it times out and you have to restart it in order for it to let you um, enter a password. So let's do that. So it's sudo docker container reset start and then we need this is portainer so we need the container id we'll copy and we will paste and we'll press enter okay now i should be able to i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this tab and then go to s and 9050 to get us to portainer so we got to proceed unsafe, blah, blah, blah. Let me change some stuff here. I've got to make a real password because it doesn't allow you to do <laughs> passwords of less than 12 characters. I messed up on this one. There we go. 
So now we can create user, now we can get into our portainer, and we can see all our stuff. The first thing that we need to do is go to enter DNS control and set a password because right now PyHole doesn't have a password. So this is PyHole. You can see internet inner DNS control is PyHole. So we'll click on that, we'll connect a root. And then the command to reset your PyHole password is PyHole dash A dash P. Press enter, it asks for a new password. Ah. And I always try to press tab at the end because I expect it to do things that way. And of course, that's not how this works. Let me try again, enter. All right, and now we can exit this now that our new password is set. Um, and we're gonna go to services and I'm just gonna turn a few things off that we don't need like GitLab. We don't need any of those. So we can press enter on that. Uh, some of the other things that we might get rid of. I don't need Nextcloud or the book stack. So I'm gonna turn those both to zero also. So press enter. Uh, book stack. The, if you press these two little arrows that are pointing at each other, that's what allows you to change the number of instances and then just press enter. And that turns those things off. So it should be a little easier for all of this to run now. Let me see if there's anything else that really needs to be turned off. I think the rest of it is probably fine. I mean, I think this knowledge app goes, D, the DB goes with the app. So I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll turn this off as well. I gotta press the right thing. Zero, enter. Okay, so that should just make this, this is a Raspberry Pi. It doesn't have a ton of resources to work with and I want it to work decently well. So just turning off some of those things is helpful. But now if we go back to our, our web top here and we can open up the internet it should open the big page that has all of our different options. So we'll see. And uh, it looks like sometimes, oh, you know what? Okay, there's something else we're gonna have to do on the Raspberry Pi, so I'll show you that too. Okay, so oftentimes the first time I try to run Firefox, it, it fails and does that, and you have to refresh the tab to get your web top back, but usually it works the second time. However, Firefox is gonna be broken on the Raspberry Pis. Firefox is automatically turning on hardware acceleration and it causes this weird kaleidoscopic thing to happen. So we gotta shut it and we gotta go to our Mate terminal and then we're gonna do Firefox. And I think we do a dash safe mode. Let's see if that works. Okay, so I don't think there's a dash. I think we just do I think we do Firefox, which is safe mode after it. We'll see. Nope. Okay, hold on. So let me do, so when all, all else help, fails, do Firefox dash dash help. And that should give us, what do we need to do safe? I think it's dash dash safe mode. Yep, dash dash safe, and we need a dash there. So this is the this is the proper command that'll actually make it safe mode work. So Firefox dash dash safe dash mode, and this time we should get a Firefox that we can actually see and interact with. Uh, that's yeah, that's okay. You can skip troubleshooting. No, no, we want to we want to do our our troubleshooting because the first thing what we need to do is we need to go to settings and then we need to go to, I think it's just in general, let's see. So we need to find hardware acceleration. Performance, here it is. Use recommended performance settings, unclick that, and then use hardware acceleration when available. Unclick that, okay. Now we should be good to go. We can go ahead and close this. You know what else I'm gonna do because it drives me nuts is I wanna to go to privacy and security 
and I'm gonna say do not ask to save logins and passwords. Okay, there we go. So now we can go ahead and close Firefox, let this go, we can exit this, and now we can go to Firefox. And we'll do advanced and we'll say accept, show us everything. And this should open up our good old home page, the Underground Nexus home page, where we get access to all the links to go to all the different places that are in the Underground Nexus. So it does take a moment for a system like this in particular. But yeah, here we go. So here's our. our built-in tools. So we want to go to Pi-hole, so we can click Pi-hole and we'll get to it. And then we already changed the password, so this new password should work if I type it in correctly. There we go. Neat. And so this is our inner DNS control. And having these inner DNS controls built into every underground nexus is one of the things that really helps them be a lot more secure because basically a lot of attacks are gonna come through DNS and like spoof DNS and things like that. So if you are using your own DNS server, then you're gonna automatically block a lot of malicious um, stuff that's gonna try and attack you. So. It's one of the things that we have built into the Nexus to make it security focused, essentially. So we always practice DevSecOps, and this is the sec part of Dev DevSecOps, or one of the sec parts. So um, anyway, then I think the next thing we gotta do is go to settings. And if we want to use this as like a network-wide DNS server for our whole network, which is our goal here, we have to go to our settings and we have to go to DNS here. And right now it's only allowing local requests, okay? So that won't work. So we need to do one of these potentially dangerous options. So I'm gonna allow it to respond only on interface ETH0. And that way when local devices on the network make requests, it will respond to them. So, and the other thing I don't like using Google is my DNS server. I always like to change it to like Cloudflare and DNS Watch or something along those lines. We'll get rid of Google. And I, I, I like to use DNSSEC and we'll go ahead and save. Okay, now I believe we are ready to use this as a DNS server. So right now, so, so the way that you use these external or these devices for like network-wide DNS is by changing the DNS server that your different devices are working for or alternatively to go into your router and to put this IP address in, whatever it is. For me, it's this, but for you, it's going to be different. Um, you're going to put that IP address into the DNS server in your router. And then whenever your router makes a DNS request, it will be to your underground Nexus instance, which should, um, which, uh, yeah, it basically means that anything on your home network that's making a DNS request, normally your router would, would manage that and would send that DNS request out externally but if you've got it set up this way then it'll ask your underground nexus request and that automatically means that everything that's on your home network using your router for dns is going to get the pie hole um, like use basically so it will have the pie hole being used for the dns um, server requests which adds to your security so in this case I'm not going to show you on my router because every router is different. So you're going to have to look up the instructions for your own router to figure out how to get this IP address into that DNS server on your router. And I will say right at the front that not every router is going to be capable of this. So 
particularly if you've got a router that's provided by an ISP, a lot of those have reduced functionalities and are kind of locked down. You may not be able to do this with one of those. You may also be able to do it as long as you can get access to the administration, like administrative pages and stuff inside your router. But in this case, I'm just going to show you on this machine. So you can just go through all your different devices that allow you to choose a DNS server and use, you know, this as your DNS. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. So this is a Windows PC. So if we open up our network connections op option, so, and there's a few different ways to get here. You might have to start in like the other, I mean, the easiest way is just to go to control panel, network internet, and then network connections, and you'll get to this place. Um, you can also do it through the setup or the settings in Windows stuff, but it's, it's a little bit of a different path. I mean, there's the different networking pages or um, like settings inside of Windows. And I think the first one that normally opens if you go to the one in the bottom right tray in your system tray and you open up the network from there, you're going to get to like network information page and you're going to have to click on adapters and settings to get to this. But anyway, you want to get to this page one way or another and then you want to find your ethernet essentially whatever it is, so it might be Wi-Fi for you, whatever you're using to hook into your home network. In my case, it's this Ethernet port. For you, it might be Wi-Fi or one of these others. Um, I also have some VMware stuff, so that's why there's these VMware adapters, but we can ignore those. So let's go to the Ethernet one and let's right click and click on properties. And then what we want to do is go here to Internet Protocol version four and we're going to click properties and this is where we can change these DNS servers. So right now you can see I've got a couple set automatically and these are other DNS servers that I have on this network running underground Nexus. But for now, we're going to test out this one that we just set up. So it's 3.3. We should be able to click OK and that saves that. So now our DNS server is set to this pie hole, we can go ahead and close this. It may take it a second to close. It's got to set the, and then we can, we'll minimize that. And now if we go to like our dashboard, we can see the different clients that are using this. And right now it's all just clients that are, are essentially part of the underground Nexus stack. But let's go search a page. So let's go to google.com. And let's just look up shark. I always do shark for my search. Okay. And so we've done a search. We should be able to see that now if we go back here in our pie hole. We've got a bunch of things that are being blocked and we've got a bunch of clients and we can see Ganymede's one of the clients and that's this computer. So now we've got another device that is using this for DNS. So anyway, that is how you use Pi-hole to set your DNS server up and how you can basically set your different devices to use this pie hole as a DNS server. So the main things that you have to do are open up the port 53 when you start your underground Nexus instance, and then of course going to settings and da, 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 going to DNS and then allowing um, the, the pie hole to respond to other queries that are on you know your, whatever your ethernet device is um, if you've got it set to allow only local requests which is how it's set by default it will not allow you to use this as like a network-wide dns so those are the main things and then you just have to set all the different devices that you want to use this either manually or use your router and set your router to use this as your dns so i think that's pretty much it I'm going to go ahead and call 
all this stuff good today and then we will play a little bit of Terraria. So let me go ahead and close this and let's get Terraria up. All right, so opening up Terraria here. So most of you probably are aware of this, but I like to play Terraria because we have our own server set up in a web top running in the underground nexus. And so this is a really good, I think, demonstration of the sorts of performance or like the type of performance that you can expect out of one of these containers. And gaming is fairly sensitive to poor performance. So yeah, I think it gives you a good idea of like how performant these things are. And I do apologize because it's gotten quite dark in my room. And so I am very dark now, but you know, you don't need to see me anyway. I'm not very useful. All right, so playing Terraria, multiplayer, join via IP, Asna, and then, um, da, 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 da. put in my password to the server. Okay, password in. Let's listen to some music. So I am going to go ahead and open up our Cloud under ra cloud Underground radio station. It's a YouTube channel, so go to YouTube and you should be able to... I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. Go to YouTube, search Cloud Underground. You should find our YouTube page and then you should be able to find our Cloud Underground Radio 24-7 live streamed music station. And let's turn it down a little bit. That's probably a bit too loud. And yeah, this is all DMCA free music. So if you do want to play it, you know, in your own streams or like recordings or whatever, you're perfectly safe to do so. And I don't know, I like it. I put together a lot of the music in it. So that kind of makes sense. So. And anyway, here's Terraria running on our web top. And yeah, it works really well. Hold on. One more thing I need to do. So every time I die, I end up putting my dies on a little bit differently. And I really like the sparks coming off me right now. I think it looks pretty, pretty awesome. And I don't really have that big of an agenda or anything in Terraria today. I did just defeat a pirate invasion, which I didn't want to defeat, but I had to. Do what you gotta do when the pirates invade. But I'm gonna, I don't know, I think one of the things I'm gonna kinda do, I've been working on, oh goodness gracious. What are these things? They're messing me up, these sand sharks. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm almost dead. All right, all right, all right. Go home, go home, go home. Holy crap. Oh, it's so hard to do anything now that I'm in hard mode. I just don't have good enough armor or resources or anything. I just kind of get pounded on, it's crazy. All right. Let's go to the nurses because I am almost dead and I have money to heal at this point. Heal me. All right. Now that I'm healed, I don't know, I'm gonna try and make this work. We'll see how it goes. Maybe if I go down this way, it'll be better. I've died quite a lot in these tunnels before I had good armor and stuff. This cutlass is pretty sweet. Let's see how it works. Yeah, not bad. It swings so incredibly fast. Oh, I'm also going the wrong way because I want this rail system here.
I don't know why things go gray sometimes down here. It's very strange. Oh. Okay. I'm trying to get to where I was working on a tunnel. This is, this is the spot. Let's work on a tunnel down here. Uh, I do believe this is it. This is my tunnel. Get my mining equipment on. That's a pretty good uh, gap. We'll, we'll make it a little bit bigger. I'm just trying to I'm trying to make it so that we got a little bit of buffer in between this cursed area. Man, everything just wants to kill me so badly, and it's so good at it down here. But I got tools. Oh, those can't go underwater. That is unfortunate, isn't it? Oh, there's so much bad stuff down here. Good grief. Why? Why'd there have to be so much bad stuff down here? Also, I need to widen this right here so I can do that real quick. I always thought that a fire pickaxe was slower, but now I'm realizing that it's not, and that's because it, it can take out stone in one hit, whereas a lot of stuff can't do that. This cutlass is not bad. It's not bad, I'm not complaining. Okay, let's keep working on mining down. I don't think there's any corruption over here, so I think we're safe. Let's just keep going down right here. Oh, do I see corruption? Yeah, those are corrupted blocks, crap. So I'm gonna go a different direction, I guess. I'm gonna go this way. Silty anyway over here, so that's always good. I always like the silt. Oh yeah, this, this cavern's perfect. Oh man, there's so much corruption. Already and I'm not. Oh goodness gracious, these guys are gnarly. up the silt now. Dang it, this is all corrupted stuff. That means I'm probably not far enough over yet still. Those dune splicers are nasty little buggers. I'm tempted to see if I can just get there by running, but I know that's a really bad idea. So I'm not going to. I am going to put on some armor like I should. And we'll grab a weapon of some sort. We'll grab the beam sword. And as always, I need some recall potions. Man, I need I just need better armor. 
All right, I'm gonna go try and recover my stuff and then we'll probably do something else. I also need rocket boots, incredibly critical for any thing you're trying to do. I don't think I'll need any more than that. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can get my stuff back. I think this is the quickest route to where I was. Oh, I don't have any torches. Oh, goodness. That's probably going to come back and bite me. Always forget that I need a light source. Oh, oh, oh. But I can just steal. Oh, no, I can't. I don't even have a pickaxe. Oh, great. Well, anyway, it was down here somewhere. There's all my stuff. Grab as much as I can. Get out. Okay. I'm sure I didn't get it all, but we'll go back. So this go in here. This can go in here. This can go in here. Let's see, I did get one set of rocket boots back, so I'll put this set back. Um, this goes here. My dinosaur, this goes here. This, oh, you know what? There we go. Anybody or don't want it a reason not to create a medium core character, you have your reason right here. Because it is a pain to do this every single time you bite it. And Terraria is one of those games you tend to bite it a lot in. Usually go there? No, this one should go there. That's just extra. This goes there. This goes there. One of these actually is. This is how it was. Alright, at least our top row is fixed again. I did not get very much of that armor back, did I? That is unfortunate. So I'll have to keep running with that other set of armor for the moment. Damage the unholy arrows are pretty good, not bad at all. See, I think, was it the pigs I was keeping these in? Yeah, yeah. I think the pig's a good spot for that. Good, I got both those back at least. What a disaster. I hate. I hate dying down there. And I gotta try and not die again when I go back down there. Let's... I need to get a, some more powerful minions. And I'm gonna put on this set again. 
just for the moment. We'll put these in here for the moment. All right, let's go see if I can recover everything else without dying again. Come get me, come get me. Yeah, you're going down, you're going down. Everybody's going down. This cutlass is pretty, pretty nice. I mean, I'm sure it's a piece of crap for hard mode weapons, but I'm still very early on in hard mode. At least we got some light this time around. And I think I need to move real fast to, to make this work, so. That's probably everything. Yeah, that should be everything. If there's more than it's lost to eternity, I think. Just kind of make sure there's nothing else anywhere over here. Yeah, yeah. All right. Back home so I can fix everything. Put these guys back. Oh, good. I got this fancy hand thing. I was worried that that was gone forever. Wait, what? Why do I have two molten breastplates now? Okay, apparently I just got one for free. Well, you know, can't complain about that, I suppose. It's like duplicating things when I die sometimes, it seems like, which is odd. I don't know why it's doing that. Grants... what? I do not know what that Dejin's curse is, but it sounds very strange. I must say. Well, let's go put this violent gradient. Well, here, let's put let's put this on my dinosaur and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. Mining greaves, they go here. What else? We got my dangerous, my dangerous. Let's sell one of these. Beam swords, sure. Sell this breastplate that I got an extra of somehow. I think the rest of this is good. I might just turn that Evan Sand into glass. Because I don't know that I've been keeping Evan Sand. I sure, certainly hope I'm not. Stupid thing to hold on to. Yeah, I'm not. I'll throw away that last bit. Soul of Night. Piranha Batter and the Dijin's Curse. What is this? I don't know. I guess I'm gonna throw it in here. I'm not really sure what to do with it other than that. Let's also get our main load out so I'm actually strong and not dying instantly of everything. Cool. All right. Well, that was eventful or something. I am going to go and kill some stupid 
altars because I need more palladium in my world, you know? We do, we do not have enough of these good resources. So, if I do this... I just gotta go find... Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go into random spots down under the underground and try and find some... Usually you find... Uh, demon altars just kind of regularly. So let's just look for some demon altars here down in the underground. Sorry. Oh, come on. Classic mistake. Go this way, we'll find some demon altars. There's one. I know there's another. Oh, there's a bunch over here. Let's just go kill some of these ones. Which is going to require me to go a different route, but that's okay. We can do that. Oh no! like the worst case scenario when I fail with my lashing thing. That used to be stone. Oof. Corruption's spreading fast these days. It's gonna be a pain to get on top of that. But anyway, let's destroy some demon altars. Alright, we just got aura cal calcium. We just got titanium. Let's destroy like three more because it'll give me some more. So, some more palladium. Or calcium. Or however you pronounce that. And here's some more. Titanium. Alright, that's all I'm going to do. Alright. I'm just gonna go run around and see if I can find some of those things now, because I desperately need stronger armor. Hmm. Oh, I was like, how did I get that out totally? But I see. Will the map reveal? No. Oops. There's some good stuff, I think. Oh, no, that's more copper. I don't know, maybe I just need to go deep in the world. Let's go deep in the world. Go to the underground. I'll probably get murdered down there, but we'll try anyway. So maybe if I stay near the sunflower, it'll be okay. Is that palladium? Oh, palladium. There's a little bit of palladium. Oh. 
Why are these caverns crystal down here? Oh boy. Just looking for some good palladium or titanium would be even better. It's got to be some... Is that palladium? Or is that copper that just looks like palladium because it's next to lava? Uh, great. It's going to be a terrible night, eh? That looks like palladium. Oh, it is. Nice, nice. Ah! I guess I am immune to lava, not the end of the world getting hit by lava, but it's usually not something you, you know, try to have happen. I don't know, whatever. I'm not afraid of you, lava. I got lava boots. Cool. I don't remember what titanium looks like. And, or cal calcium or calcium or calcium? I don't know. That's copper, right? Yeah. Psh. Don't want that crap. That's palladium, I do believe. I'm just going, bit, that's copper, you know, but this has got a different look to it. Yeah, this is palladium. Unfortunately, I only have seven seconds of immunity to lava. <laughs> I'm getting so, t it's getting very dark in here, sorry. As I try and die. Let my lava immunity build back up. Okay, now we're good. All right, there it is. Well, I feel like palladium Armor is not going to be all that great, so I'd really like to find some good titanium or, or calcium. That would probably be ideal. Oh, here we go. That, that must be the ore calcium. Dang, I need a palladium pick pickaxe to even get it would appear. A strong molten pickaxe is not good enough. So I know where this is. I'll be back. I also might need a palladium forge. Right now I got the hell forge. Might need to upgrade that. create as much as we can. That's a pretty good stash of palladium to start with. Let's see what we can create with it. Alright. Palladium pickaxe. Palladium sword. Palladium axe. Palladium war axe. Palladium chainsaw. Whoa. Drill can mine mithril or... And what's better, the drill or the pickaxe? Very fast speed versus fast speed. 130% pickaxe power, both are good. This has one less range, but it sounds pretty cool. I'm actually gonna grab the drill, you know, why not? Boom. So now, extremely, f very fast speed, very fast speed, fast speed. Well, I mean, I probably just need to put away the old superior 
platinum pickaxe. All right, let's let's go try it out. Let's go grab that orc calcium. And that was down here. Oops. See all those crystals in the cave, they really concern me. Where did I find that minecart track? Oh, it's all the way up here. Okay. Not the bees. I like my two bees, but unfortunately they are outdated now. I'm going to have to find some better minions. Take a cutlass. I should have made a palladium. That palladium um, sword's probably pretty sweet. Oh, stop moving my cart. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Minus one range is kind of a bummer, but it's pretty fast, it seems like. I think those were giant bats. Oh, good grief. I gotta take care of this guy. Rune the wizard. Eat that rune. Rune hat and rune robe. Cool. Sweet. See if we run across any titanium here. Oh, there's some. Yeah, that's titanium for sure. Dang it, this drill can't drill titanium. I gotta build the. I guess I gotta build an ore calcium drill, and then I can get my. That's. A little sad, not gonna lie. Well, let's look for a little bit more or calcium and titanium, then I probably ought to go since you can't even see me anymore. I am going to get a light to improve this stream at some point. Awesome did I get? 35 seems like a decent start. So let's put my Palladium back. Or Calcium or Can I make... There they are. And then we can do a sort. Items. Alright. So there's our Or Calcium or Palladium. I got enough for... Those are pretty cool. Dang, those are super cool. Take this off. Wow, look at that. I run around with like little... Okay, this is pretty cool. Well, and I can steal this gradient die from my dinosaur. Put it on myself. Okay, I like that. That's pretty slick. Alright, well, any, anyway. I think that's probably it for me today. I'm trying to decide if I like that better, or... 
or I just like the regular. I think I just like the regular, it's so cool looking. And the hat's not bad, it'll, I think the, oh, what is the hat? Oh, it looks pretty good without, honestly. Maybe I'll just put this pink dye back. Bright red, bright pink, oh. Traded for rare dyes. Oh, that's how you get the rare dyes. Let's see what kind of rare dye I get when I trade this plant. Now I'm curious. Strange plants. You bring me blue. Yes, yes. Take this bottle of special dye for your troubles. Blue acid dye. Blue acid dye. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, man. Pretty, pretty stinking cool, honestly. Although now I don't trail sparks, which that's a disappointment. So I'll give the acid dyes. That will go to my, my dinosaur. <laughs> and we'll make, Look how cool that guy, the orb is with the acid dye. Freaking awesome. All right, moving up in the world here. You know what? I actually am gonna leave the dinosaur and I'm gonna use the blue acid dye on this guy. Yes, I love it. All right, looking pretty cool, pretty slick. All right, I'm gonna call it since nobody can see me anyway. Um, thank you all for joining me on this stream. Uh, like I said earlier in the stream, if you are curious about Cloud Underground and who we are and what we do, please go to our website, cloudunderground.dev, and you can learn more about us there and join the real life RPG. It will help you navigate what we do and, and what can help you, what we do that can help you. So anyway, thanks again. I hope everybody has a great weekend and I will see you next time. Bye.